Well, I am back and welcome to another worship experience with Brown Missionary Baptist Church. And I'm here, Bartholomew Orr. And today I get a chance to spend it with Terrence Green Jr. How are you doing, TJ? I'm doing good, Pastor. How oh, are you? my goodness. TJ Animations Workshop is coming up. We're going to be talking more about that, but I'm just excited uh, because, my goodness, you, you grew up around here and we're excited about all of that. But I do want you to go ahead, take the opportunity. Y'all know the spiel by now. I, I have to get recalibrated uh, to it. But hit that like button, hit that share button. Uh, matter of fact, make sure that you invite a family, invite some friends uh, by texting BMBC to 27636. Um, if you're not already signed up for the devotionals, and oh my goodness, we've had some awesome writers over these last couple of months writing the devotionals. Uh, if you're not already signed up, you can always text devotional to 27636 it's august is women's month and so look we want to get at least 300 new women subscribers to our devotional and they're doing such an awesome job uh, with bible class teaching and everything help us to hit that thousand uh, shares this worship experience and tj uh look we're just finishing next gen month of july and it was a tremendous month and and look i'm excited about that month of next gen because TJ is just a living example that here at Brown is all about raising up this next generation. And what a tremendous month it was, all from the preaching uh, and and then from all that the young people were doing as well, TJ, how are you doing? I'm doing good, Pastor. I'm doing real good. What about yourself? I can't complain. <laughs> now, to talk about Next Gen, you are Next Gen. Yes, sir. Introduce. Tell us about TJ and animations and all of that. So I started my company when I was in college. I actually made my first animated video in high school, but I didn't realize the potential then. And so I started my company as a side business at Mississippi State. Wow. And then about 14 months ago, I was able to go full time into my business. Get out of here. Yes, sir. And so Entrepreneur, how old? 25. 25. Oh, my goodness. How old were <laughs> you when you came here? Uh, I was about 10. You know, I, I was in the sixth grade. So Wow. Yeah, yes, sir. Wow, that is fantastic. Brown, that's what it's all about. It's about how do we train up this uh, these leaders, not only just for tomorrow, but even for today, and um, the business animation. People think about animation. What what is it all that you do? So, the animation I do, I focus on explaining what an organization does. So, whenever a business needs to explain what they do or the service they provide, they call me. Or if they want to just educate their prospects or just build a course, they call me to handle their job. Now. Did you, where, where were you majoring in, in college? So I majored in business and with a major in marketing. So I had to teach myself how to make the animation, but okay. but I implemented the animation into the business part. So college so, helped me with that. So let me get this straight. You did not go to school to learn animation. No, sir. You just learned, you went to school for business, marketing, and animation something you picked up on your own. Yes, sir. And it was actually a blessing that I found the software that I did because I, I always say that I never knew I was going to do animation. I wanted to play basketball, but, you know, God had the path for me to create animation. I found a software that I was able to learn quickly, and then, you know, I just never could get away from it, honestly. Wow. Now, look, let me just, let me just throw this in here. Because young people, one of the things that I'm thankful for is that you all have so many opportunities that are out there. And you never know the doors that the Lord will open up, the breakthroughs that God would give you. So always be ready to say yes to the opportunities. And that comes from just preparing yourself yes, sir. and being ready yes, to sir. walk through those doors. Now, now, how do, how would you say that you prepared yourself and your, so tell me a little bit about your family, your upbringing. <laughs> so of course, Pastor Green is my father. And then, you know, Mrs. Valerie Green is my mother, you know, so they were active in Brown, you know, media ministry, then the pastoral staff. And so I had yes. great examples and I was just brought up in the church, which really kind of helped me because 
you have to stay open minded in life because you can't have like a fixed path. You know what I'm saying? You can't have it. Right. I want to do it my way. You know, it, it, it doesn't work like that. So that helped me prepare just being open minded to the opportunities like and that. being able to listen to what God is trying to do in your life. So faith, you know, and uh, you, you talked about being brought up in church. So how would you say that your faith have guided your business in, endeavors? So have you ever had those situations where it seems like it's supposed to be simple from A to B, but all of a sudden something just kind of just stops you right there? <laughs> that So having faith, knowing that God has an overall plan, that when that thing stops you, that it's for a greater purpose and just accepting they just roll with the punches just ride the wave and honestly just go because it honestly works out in the end i can honestly say anything that just caused me to go another way it worked out in the very end when i look back on it so like that, that within itself has just helped me and it's, it's brought me in places that i never thought i, I would have been in Hey, look, you're watching Brown Missionary Baptist Church, and uh, this is our worship experience. And I'm here with TJ, with TJ's animations. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the workshop. But if you have not already done so, hit that like button, hit that share button, invite some family and friends to come and be a part of this worship experience. It's the first weekend in August. I'm, I'm back. I'm looking forward to preaching. I don't know if y'all can tell. My voice have gotten a little light, uh, not using it over the month. But uh, August is a special month because it is Women's Month, and we're celebrating all of the women of God in our lives. And you mentioned your mom, Valerie. I love yeah. that name, by the way. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but hey, Terrence and I always talk about the fact that both of us have some Valerie. Right, right. Um, but, you know, who, who else are some special women in your life uh, in addition to your mom? So... My, I call her my future fiance, Caitlin. <laughs> <laughs> she's been behind me, supportive. Uh, she's helped me along the way, just being there for me. You know, somebody I can talk to. So it's always good to have that person. I like that. I like that. And uh, hey, you all met in Sunday school. Right, right. In <laughs> Sunday school. Right. This church. <laughs> Who was the teacher? Um, so we had different classes at that time. So I, uh, Mr. David Brown was my teacher at the time because it was in Sunday school days before media oh, and everything. Okay. So she had a different teacher. And so oh, wow. we would meet in the hallways. You know how they used to do in school, hey. you know. <laughs> Look, let me just throw a plug in. If you're not already a part of Sunday School, <laughs> Look, you need to come to Sunday School at Brown Baptist because you never know what you might learn in the classroom and then who you might meet in the hallway, right. your future fiancé. Right. And y'all were just teenagers right, when right. you all first met. And it's been a joy just watching the two of you all grow yes. uh, and so forth. So Brown is all about connections at Brown. We, we do it all <laughs> At Brown, but it is Women's Month, yes, and we got a lot of things uh, uh, planned for women. As a matter of fact, sink or swim, and uh, ladies, we want you to swim. We want you to dive out into the deep uh, in and experience God and deepen your faith as you've never done before. And so, a lot is is planned for um, Women's Month. But you have a workshop yes, coming sir. up. Yes, Tell me a little bit more about that. So. I talked about the video service side, but I've started teaching kids how to create animation. I want to give them the same opportunity that I was blessed to have. And the software is real easy to use, but a lot of parents don't know that it's out there because a lot of them have, a lot of parents come to me and like, I want my kid to get animation. We just don't know where to start. So I decided like, why not give them, you know, a way to start. We do expos, which are actually free right now. I don't charge okay. anything to introduce to the information because I feel yeah. like that should be free. The only thing we ever charge for is like actual training on how to create videos. So that's what the workshop is about. Exposing, uh, giving our young, letting our young people know what exactly is out there. That's when. When is your next one coming up? So I plan to have one next month. So it's still in the works because we're trying to do even more stuff with Next Gen. Um, Great. And, and work with all the youth. We've done workshops for the little kids. We also want to do stuff with the college students and young adults age as well to give them opportunities. You know, we talk about videos. Who is not making a video, <laughs> creating a video? playing a game right. I'm, I mean all of this stuff that is right here on our phone look why not use that for our advantage I mean these these can be opportunities for us to work to right. be employed mm -hmm. because again TJ you said 14 months ago 
this is you're doing this now full time right right and it started in college like i, I was doing this while taking classes you wow. know while just do, so you can do this on the side as well so it gives you that freedom to even test the waters in that way as well that's great look brown missionary baptist church it's it's worship time uh we're excited to have you a part of what is happening here at this church again we want to invite you uh, to come be a part in person or online i would love to see you in person especially since i haven't seen y'all uh in 30 some days but i uh, would love to see you in person but even online look text that link out uh, invite some others to be a part of this worship experience you don't want to miss it's the first weekend in august my goodness, y'all, it's time to have church. And uh, so, look, uh, again, thank you all so very much for being a part of us. I want you to stay tuned for our upcoming announcements and observations, and then we're going into worship. And uh, TJ, maybe one of your little uh, animations can be saying amen uh, yes, for the sermon today. Yes, sir. <laughs> Hello, Brown Baptist family. This is the day the Lord has made and we all have a reason to rejoice and be glad in it. We're so happy you made the decision to worship with us today. Our prayer is that everything you experience today will inspire you to live out your faith no matter the situation. To our guests, we would love to connect with you. So please text BMBC guest to 27636 to let us know a little more about you and to receive the gift of appreciation. And make sure you like, love, tag, and comment on the live stream and invite others to worship with you. Do your part to let the world know about the one who can change everything. Here are your announcements for this week. August is Women's Emphasis Month at Brown and we'll be highlighting all the women of God in our lives. Text SWIM to 27636 to get more information on how you can be a part of our Women's Month activities. BMBC Women, get ready. We're bringing back our worship on Wednesdays for the month of August. Every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m., we'll gather at the South Campus for prayer, praise and worship, and a powerful word from the Lord. This week's speaker is our own Bunny Killebrew. Limited tickets are available for our women's afternoon and tea on Saturday, August 13th at 10 a.m. Register online at brownbaptist.org or in the bookstore. Mark your calendars for Women's Weekend, August 13th and 14th, featuring guest speaker Lady Leah Hill McNeil, musical guest Dr. Judith McAllister, and the BNBC Women's Choir. Services will be held Saturday at 6 p.m. and Sunday 8 a.m. at the main campus and Sunday 11 a.m. at the South Campus. Get ready for our Power Unleashed Revival with our dynamic speaker, Pastor Marcus Cosby, and musical guests Jonathan Nelson and John P. Key on August 30th through 31st at 7 p.m. Revival services will be held at the South Campus. Stay tuned to our social media and website for more information. Those are your announcements for this week. To get all the updates, information, and details, text BMBC to 27636. Visit our website, brownbaptist.org, and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And BMBC family, remember, this is the year of power, and we are claiming revival across our community and souls saved and set free. We declare victory over the enemy because we can do more than we can ask or think through God's power as we continue changing lives and making a difference. Have a blessed and incredible week. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is a day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be exceedingly glad therein. Uh, I'm Bartholomew Orr. Hey, man, I, I almost feel like I need to reintroduce myself. But grateful for each of you all joining us. And those that are joining us online as well, thank you uh, for just tuning in, streaming. If this is your first time worshiping with us, please uh, text BMBC guest to 27636. We have a special gift of appreciation just for you. Want all of you to take the opportunity, whether you're in person, online, 
hit that like button, hit that share button, send that text link out uh, to somebody and let them know that, um, look, worship is going on. You still got time uh, to be in church, whether online or in person. And uh, so grateful to see each one of you this morning. Uh, let me just say happy anniversary to Dwayne and Keisha Shepherd. Amen. They did give great faithful service to our creative service and ERT. They're celebrating 27 years of marriage this weekend pass off to them and then Pastor Bobby and Sister Dorothy Jones uh, who are also faithful members here they're celebrating 56 years of marriage amen and so grateful for them and then a, a very special shout out to the Green family uh, Freddie and Sherry Mackey family they are worshiping with us today and so I don't wear the green okay amen y'all would be wearing green I should have known I should have known. Amen. So we are grateful to have them with us. And then we are grateful to have a Germantown High School football team. Fellas, where are y'all? Amen. We got the football team from Germantown High uh, worshiping with us today. Uh, grateful for you for being here. And uh, we appreciate uh, Pastor Rosalind Nichols also uh, with MIFA uh, that's worshiping with us today. Appreciate the partnership uh, that Brown has uh, with MIFA. Thank you so very much, MIFA. Amen. As well. Look, I want you to go ahead, hit that like button, hit that uh, share button. Our goal is to try to get a thousand shares. Amen. Uh, text and tell folks, look, he looks younger. He looks younger. Amen. At least I hope I look younger. <laughs> Amen. But, but go ahead. It's time to have church. And uh, they got the right folks worshiping and leading us in worship. Amen. These, this is our season saints. Amen. They've been on fire all weekend long. So come on, y'all stand to your feet as they come and bless us. And our deacon wives will be leading us in our time of devotion. Amen. Good morning, Brown. It's just a blessing to see you. We are wanting to sing to the power of the Lord come down. So come on and join in with the season, saints, as we praise God.
gotta thank God. You gotta thank God. You gotta thank God. That he gives his power. Do you know what power looks like? I'm gonna tell you what it looks like. When my mama went to the doctor, that doctor said, you got cancer, stage two. Then we gonna have surgery. Then you come out of surgery with stage four. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. We go into surgery to make it better. We come out with stage four. Baby, you talking about need some power. You talking about need some power. Then you go to treatment. The first treatment they come back and say, the tumor's all shrunk. Oh my God, the tumor's all shrunk. I don't want you. Baby, you talking about power. You talking about Holy Ghost power. You talking about God working. God was 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 working, God was working baby. trauma hospital I see it every day miracles miracles that's power Woo. Woo. praise the Lord praise the Lord it's favor 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 we ain't that cute we ain't that smart we ain't that rich but he still loves us every day he still takes care of us we're nobody. Our scripture reading comes from 1 Corinthians 23rd through the 29th chapter in the King James Version. And it reads as such. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. 
And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Repeat after me, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I can do all things. I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Woo. Yay, Jesus. Woo. Yay, Jesus. Oh, Lord, Daddy. We are so excited to be here today. We have entered into your gates with praise and thanksgiving. We have left the cares of this world out on the parking lot. We are excited to be with our sisters and brothers in Christ to lift up the name of Jesus. So this morning, Lord, we invite you in, into our songs and our worship and our testimonies and our praise, into the sermon, Father God. Let your angels join in with our voices as we lift up hallelujahs. Let us not have to be begged to say amen, Father God. Let us trust in you and you alone for the power that we need to make it through. Lord, let this service be one that simply brings a smile to your face. Let it be said, let it be heard that you were much pleased with Brown Missionary Baptist at 11 o'clock service this first Sunday in August. Why? Because they thought not about themselves. They didn't think about what was for dinner. They didn't worry themselves about how they look. They let go and they served me in abandonment. That is my prayer this morning. Lord, that we just cut loose of ourselves and we invite your spirit in as never before. And we praise you with everything that we have within us. Let it be said that these people this day worship the Lord in spirit and in truth in the matchless name of Jesus to God be the glory amen and amen yeah. because I know I know he holds my future Oh yes he does And life is worth The living death Because he lives Why be your man can you help me say because?
He's still on the throne. How many still feel like going on despite everything around you? Oh, because I know Because he lived the living death. Because can you say it one more time? And life, and life, because he lived. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so very much. Amen, Dr. Neal. Thank you, Sister Denise green for just blessing us at time of meditation and uh, we are praying for all of these requests uh, that are coming in uh, sister mary uh, butler smith amen we're praying for you uh, mary moved here and retired and been serving so faithful here for the past 18 years today is her last su there you are girl there you are uh, today is her last Sunday she's moving back to be with family uh, but we appreciate you amen such a melodious voice in our choir all that you have as well as you've served and um, I'm looking for you transitioning to just online member, amen, once you get back home. But we're praying for you, uh, praying also for your son, uh, this prayer request, Corey uh, Wilkes, uh, praying for him even now. Uh, praying, amen, Dr. Mary Patton, just for um, healing uh, in your body in the name of Jesus. Uh, we're continuing to pray for Larry Phillips Jr., amen, and for all of our college students that are going back um, to college um, this week, that God would just cover them and that God will be with them in a very special way. Uh, Sean, amen. Sean Hammond, we're praying for you for just healing in the name of Jesus. We know he is able. Uh, Brother Terrence Davis and family, we're praying for you, Terrence, for just healing, praying also uh, for your bereavement and the passing of your niece. Um, and then we're continuing to pray uh, for Sister Geraldine Thomas and just healing in her body for Jared uh, Carswell, um, for Kyla Green. Uh, and you can continue to send these prayer requests. Appreciate the prayer warriors that have been praying and that will continue to pray uh, for your son, Darius uh, Palmer, for your brothers, Eldon and Taraski Hamblin, for your daughter, uh, Ramirian. We're praying for them, for little baby Trey and um, his parents, praying for them. Uh, we're praying for your Aunt Betty Henderson, uh, praying for that. And, and uh, one more, I want to just give a uh, prayer of thanks for report of no evidence of cancer for Jennifer McDaniel following successful surgery. Amen. And we're continuing to pray for your niece, Danielle Daniels. And, and uh, we know God is a healer. Sometimes we need to hear the testimonies and the praise report um, that our God is still able. Beverly Thomas, we're praying for you um, as well. And then for all of the uh, uh, bereaved families among us, uh, through this month of July, Brown, we lost so many members and definitely appreciate Pastor Anderson and the entire pastoral staff that have been stepping in even in our absence uh, for caring and comforting those that are going through. But we're lifting up the family of our member, Brother Ralph Lewis. Uh, he was finalized on Thursday. 
the family of our member, Brother Melvin Easley, uh, was funeralized yesterday. Appreciate you, Pastor Jackson, for doing that. Family of Sylvia McNeil Guy, Pastor Anderson, uh, did her committal yesterday. Uh, family of Evan Pittman, uh, who was funeralized at our main campus yesterday. And then this afternoon, uh, when we finish here, we'll go back to the main campus for the funeral of uh, Brother Roy Loomis. And um, those who, uh, in the early days, amen, uh, even when we started 8 o'clock service, y'all, uh, we didn't have a choir. Uh, we didn't start 8 o'clock because there was a crowd going on. We started 8 o'clock just to have some church. And it was just me. It was just uh, Roy. Roy was the choir, amen, uh, and the musician. And um, God blessed and has continued to bless. And so uh, we're praying for Katie and his daughter, Brandy, who are so faithful here. And then we're also next Saturday already planning funerals uh, for some more faithful members, Brother Courtney Thompson, uh, just 35, and we're lifting his mama, Katie Howard, up to the Lord uh, for Dr. Alice Figs, another faithful member, and Brother Willie, we're praying for you and your sons, the family of Carla Malone and the passing of her grandfather, uh, Lynn Moore and passing of her mother um, yesterday. Um, continue to pray for Helen Hannah, who had to utilize her sister um, yesterday. And then our, uh, uh, my Indian mother, amen, passed away this past week uh, there in the uh, southern part of India. And so Marlo Phillip, Pastor Marlo Phillip and Merlin Jacobs, we're praying for you all and your entire family. Uh, such a sweet mother, a uh, precious woman of God, a jewel as she uh, was so faithful. And uh, we're lifting them up to the Lord uh, even now in our prayers. Prayer still works. And in the midst of whatever you're going through, uh, we encourage you to keep on praying. Well, we've come to our ministry of love where we worship the Lord through the giving of our tithes and our offering unto him. The book of Exodus reminds us, Brown, uh, that none of us should appear before God empty-handed. Everyone, every worship ought to give something unto the Lord. And um, there are many ways that you can give here at Brown. I appreciate your faithfulness and your generosity that even in our absence as you've continued uh, to sow into this ministry. So whether you're giving through our app, you can always download the app, give right there from the app, maximize the use of that if you have not already downloaded it. You can give online um, through your computer or through your smart device. You can call your gift in to the church uh, at 662-342-6407. Appreciate those that are manning the phones. And then you can also uh, still write a check. Amen. The envelopes have been provided for you. If you're present this morning and need an offering envelope, if you slip up a hand, our ushers will make sure that you are serviced this morning. And uh, we give as we go. And so um, those that are present on your way out, uh, we ask that you will drop in one of the receptacles on the outside. Uh, but we're thankful for God. In Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Come on, let's read that together. Give and you will receive. Your gift will return in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. And uh, God has been faithful, Brown. Our young people have put together a special news um, uh, cast just to give us a snippet of where God has done for us um, this past quarter. And then after they have finished, our seasoned saints are coming. But let's pray right now. Father God, all that we have becomes from you. And uh, we're thankful for how you have sustained us. Even through this summer, God, and as this summer comes into an end, as we go into these um, fall months, Lord, I pray for your continued blessing. So as we give, as we honor you, as we give our tithe and sow back into you, Lord, I pray that you would take the gift, multiply it, and that it would be used for the building of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, young people. Amen. Hello, Brown Baptist family. Our second quarter has been filled with incredible success and opportunities. Only through the power of God have we seen this happen. 
Let me share with you how God worked through us the second quarter. As the violence continued to rage through our communities, God used our pastor and pastoral staff to bring revival through their relational and relevant messages. From order in the church, to power in a broken world, to power in restoration, we've been challenged to use God's word to be change agents in our own lives, as well as in the lives of the people we interact with on a daily basis. That's right, Zion. These great messages ignited us to continue to serve faithfully as we opened up our church for our young people, grieving families, and partner organizations to provide assistance to our community. Brown always remains a beacon of light as we partner with the Rise Against Hunger to package food for people in need in our community and across the globe. In just one day, 256 BNBC volunteers packaged over 35,000 pounds of food. And as we continue to embrace all generations, this quarter we celebrated 289 graduates during our baccalaureate service, including myself, served 89 families during our community baby dedications, and baptized 65 new believers and we invested over $50,000 in our local schools from Whitehaven High to Georgia Hills Elementary. And if that wasn't enough, Jordan, God allowed us to see exponential spiritual growth across our digital platforms. This quarter, we had over 6,000 worshiping with us online, over 1,000 new devotional subscribers, over 64,000 people engaged with the Wednesday morning prayer call. Our pastor acts and we all delivered by every ministry and family covering Memphis and the Mid-South in prayer for 24 hours, with 30 ministries participating, over 500 people praying in person, thousands praying online, and God showed the power of prayer through over 2,000 prayer requests. To God be the glory. As you can see, your gift of time, talent, and treasures continues to fuel us in changing lives and making a difference. Thank you, Brown Baptist, because you, you made, made this happen. happen.
He is a doctor. He is a healer. He is a way maker. Thank you so very much, Keisha. Tisha, we're praying for you and your grandmother's passing. And Tammy, we're praying for you. Tammy Starks, praying for you. And continue to be praying uh, for the family of Pearl Hardy. Uh, we'll be finalized this upcoming week um, in Chicago. And her son and daughter-in-law are just sweet, faithful members of Brown. We're praying for all of these prayer requests. And Father God, we need... Uh, that kind of healing today. So many hurting hearts. So many are going through. So many are feeling as if there is no way out. They can't even see the light at the end of the tunnel. And some are in the valley of despair about to throw in the towel. But we thank you right now, God, that you have brought us here to this place, this day. And God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would speak a word from on high. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Just to mold us and to, to make us, to feel us and to use us. Oh, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh. And God, we'll be careful to give thy name the praise. The victory is already yours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let every heart say thank you, Jesus. We give praises to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, to Pastor Anderson, thank you so very much, Pastor Anderson, Pastor Conley, all of the pastoral staff, amen, Brown, uh, that have done such a tremendous job. Um, and then our friend and brother, amen, Brother Grover, uh, Cooper, amen, great to have you worshiping with us today. Um, for over 30 years, amen, has been faithful in college ministry with Campus Crusade for Christ Brown. And uh, we've been able to partner with them. So grateful, Grover, for you. God bless you, Dr. Rosalind Nichols, amen, Pastor. Thank you so very much with my for, for coming and to share with us today. Amen. Sister Stanton, amen. I know that's not your, your last name now, but you know, amen. Uh, just appreciate having these Stantons. I feel real special. I've had Stantons in both services today. Amen. So God bless you. Well, Brown, uh, we're blessed to be here. It's August. It's Women's Month. And uh, our women has been doing a tremendous job already. Thank you. Um, one of the things that we do, our strategy is simple, y'all. We're reading the Bible. We read it through the week. We blog it. We study it. And then we'll come right back on the weekend and preach it. And so we're grateful this month. The preaching series is Into the Deep. Into the Deep. We're reading through the book of Ruth and Jonah. And I appreciate uh, this special month. Our women are taking the lead, so they're doing the devotionals. Uh, Sister Norma um, Oliver has been doing a tremendous job this past week, and uh, they've been worshiping and leading in worship as well, so another great week is coming. Every month, we try to add 300 new subscribers to our devotional. Ladies, I know this month being Women's Month, this, that number is going to be a 1,000 um, new women, and, um, and so look, encourage all your sisters to text devotional to 27636 uh, as we read together, as we blog together, as we preach together through the word of God. And so I want to call your attention this uh, morning, uh, this afternoon, the, to the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verse 19 through 21. Ruth chapter 1, verse 19 through 21. And uh, we're reading from the New Living Translation. Ruth chapter 1. One, and verse 19 through 21. And as we stand for the word of God, if you have it, say amen. amen. These words are recorded therein. So the two of them continued on their journey. 
When they came to Bethlehem, the entire town was excited by their arrival. Is it really Naomi? The women asked. Don't call me Naomi, she responded. Instead, call me Mara. For the Almighty has made life very bitter for me. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me home empty. Why call me Naomi when the Lord has caused me to suffer and the Almighty has sent such tragedy upon me? Don't call me Naomi. Instead, call me bitter, for the Almighty has made life very bitter for me. I want to just preach about uh, this morning from this subject, how to make it better. How to make it better. It happens, brothers and sisters, loss happens. And the losses can add up, and before you know it, you're beginning to feel so bitter, thinking you have nothing left. It happens, it happens. Life happens. And the lows of life can weigh you down. Anybody ever been weighed down because of life? If it wasn't one thing, it was another. And it seemed like it kept coming in floods. And before you know it, you begin to feel bitter on the inside to the point of to where you think, I cannot take anything else. Well, it happened, brothers and sisters, to Naomi. Her happily ever after fairy tale ended abruptly. And it ended abruptly because famine had already taken her home away. Because when times got rough there in Bethlehem, Naomi, her husband, and her two sons left Bethlehem to go to Moab looking for a place and better opportunity. Famine took her home away, and then the funerals took her husband away. Then 10 years later, funerals took both of her sons away and now her future seems hopeless because now it's not just one widow out there trying to make it. Now it's three widows trying to make it because it is her and her two daughter-in-laws. Talk about a bitter pill to swallow. Brothers and sisters, Naomi felt the bitterness she felt it down on the inside and I can only imagine in my mind that nobody really understood totally what she was feeling. She felt the bitterness on the inside and not only did Naomi feel the bitterness on the inside brown, Naomi expressed her bitterness. Now, I know, brothers and sisters, uh, uh, sometimes we, we, we like to uh, make people think that everything is going right with us. But have you ever ran across some one of those individuals that when you ask them how they are doing, they really opened up and told you how they were doing? Well, that's what Naomi did. She expressed her bitterness. And it didn't just stop in verse 20. But even if you go back up to verse 13, uh, she is going to ask her daughter-in-law, would you wait for them to grow up and refuse to marry someone else? No, of course not, my daughter. Uh, things are far more bitter for me than for you. Because the Lord himself has raised his fist against me can you feel her frustration brothers and sisters as Naomi said to herself and said even to the daughter-in-law let me stop fooling myself she told those girls y'all go on home I, there's nothing that I can do for you there is nobody that I can give to you y'all go on home because why I'm fighting a losing battle the reason why I'm fighting a losing battle is because I'm not just going up against the times of this world, but even God himself is fighting against me. She felt it. She expressed it. And then the old man went so far as changing her name to bitterness. 
Ruth chapter 1, verse 20. We read it. Don't call me Naomi. Instead, call me Myra. And that's the same word from verse 13. Uh, why? It, uh, it means bitterness. For the Almighty has made life bitter for me. Brothers and sisters, Naomi was just full of bitterness. Truth be told, Brown, I believe there are some Naomi's in the house today. I'm looking at some folks, and boy, y'all look so good. Uh, uh, y'all got all dressed up and, and put on y'all your fine perfume and cologne. But if the truth be told, don't raise your hand, but there are some bitter folks in here today. Man, man, matter of fact, so bitter because the times of life have even robbed your beauty that you used to have. When Naomi showed back up in town, many of them couldn't even believe that it was Naomi because she didn't even look like what she looked like when she left. And they asked the question, is this Naomi? Somebody is saying, Pastor, I got some wrinkles in my face because of the worries and the stress of life. The trials of life have drained my strength and dignity. And I hear what you're saying, Pastor. I'm here, but if the truth be told, I'm bitter. Bitter because of the financial struggles. Bitter because of the sick the, a report that have come back. I got disease in my body and I did everything that I could. Exercising and working out and I still got sick. I'm bitter because I've been overlooked for the promotion. Bitter because he left me. Some of y'all bitter because he stayed with you. I'm here, but I'm bitter, bitter because I'm having to raise children all by myself, bitter because of the loneliness that I'm going through in my life, bitterness because of the circumstances of this life. I'm here, but I'm bitter. And the question that you're asking this morning is, how do I make it better? How do I make it better when it seems as if everything is against me how do i make it better when it seems as if god himself is fighting against me a preacher if it wasn't for bad luck i wouldn't have any luck at all how in the world do I make it better? Well, I stopped by to give you the answer. Y'all have come with a good question this morning. Since success starts with your perspective. To make it better, drop the I and replace it with E. If you're bitter this morning and you want to make it better, just drop the I and replace it with E. Now, I know, I know this, this, this black Baptist preacher didn't stay gone 35 days to come back on a Sunday and give us a spelling lesson, but that's what I've come to do, JT. Look, uh, uh, if you want to make it better, and you're better, uh, uh, just drop the I, B-I-T-T-E-R. Drop the I, replace it with E, and it becomes B. E-T-T-E-R. You see, I thank God for Naomi because what happened to Naomi is what happens to many of us, y'all, and it's all about her perspective. What made her bitter was because of it was all about I. Can you hear it in the mind? Naomi is saying, I got it worse than everybody else. I am going through. Nobody knows what I'm feeling. I have the fist of God against me. I went away full. I'm coming back empty. I'm suffering. I have tragedy. I lost a husband. I lost two sons. I lost my home. I, I, I. And yet God is saying, drop the I. Replace it with E and your bitter will become better. Well, how do I do that, preacher? What, what E? What, what E? Because it's all about your perspective. What E should I replace it with? I'm glad you asked. Let me give it to you and I'll let you go. First of all, E is everybody. C, everybody. I call this her isolation, her isolation, because Ruth chapter 1, verse 8, look what it says. But on the way, Naomi said to her uh, two daughter-in-laws, go back to your mother's home. May the Lord reward you for your kindness to your husbands and to me. 
I want us to learn this morning, Brown, from Naomi's mistakes. And here's mistake number one that Naomi made, and that was simply she isolated herself. She isolated herself. Notice, notice y'all, there were people with Naomi in verse 6. There were people with Naomi because verse 6 says, Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had blessed his people in Judah by giving them crops again. Not only were there people in verse 6, somebody told her the good news. She also had two daughter-in-laws in verse 6 because the latter part of verse 6, so Naomi and her daughter-in-laws got ready to leave Moab to return to her homeland. And even when they stepped out on the journey, uh, Naomi was not by herself because verse 7 said uh, that uh, with her two daughter-in-law, she stepped out from the place where she had been living and they took the road that would lead them back to Judah. Do y'all see the fact that somebody is with her? She's not alone. But then look at verse 8. But on the way. But on the way. But on the way. I, I don't know when it happened. I don't know how it happened. But somewhere along the way, Naomi told her daughter-in-laws to leave her alone. Matter of fact, verse 9, May the Lord bless you with the security of another marriage. And then she kissed them goodbye. And they all broke down and well it was already a bitter situation talk about moving from your home talk about losing your husband talk about losing both of your son it was already a bitter situation but now she is becoming even more bitter why because she is isolating Herself. I need to tell you something, Brown. One of the things that have messed us up over the past couple of years going through this uh, pandemic, one of the silent uh, killers of this pandemic has been simply isolation isolation folks not getting out folks not connecting with one another folks staying in the home some of y'all don't even get up some of y'all watching online don't even get up even for church you just roll over and just watch it for a few hours and roll back over you don't even put on clothes don't turn on the lights isolation is happening and let me give you three simple truths, brothers and sisters, uh, uh, when it comes to isolation. Look, truth number one, we, are, we were created for companionship. We were created for companionship. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, the Lord God said, it's not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. God created each one of us to have somebody to go through this life. None of us are islands on that stream all by ourselves. We all need somebody. I ain't talking about you. You need a man. You need a woman. Look, you just need somebody to walk this journey with you. Not only were we created for companionship, but we strive best in community. We strive best in community. That's why we need to come together even as a church community. Why? Because Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 through 12, two people are better off than one for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated. But two can stand back to back and conquer. They are three are even better. For a triple braided cord is not easily broken. I need you to know, y'all, we strive best in community. Thank you, football team, for being here this morning because just one quarterback running down the field alone won't make it. But I dare you to give me a whole football team that works together. Give me some blockers. Give me somebody that's willing uh, to step in. Give me somebody that can throw in the catch. And guess what you have? You got a winning team when we come together. But then let me give you a third one, y'all. Here's third truth. When burden, there must be cooperation. 
When there are burdens, there must be cooperation. Look, if you're thinking that you can handle everything in life by yourself, if you're thinking that you don't need anybody, if you're so proud and, 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 and so, I'm telling you, I'm not going to ask anybody for him. I ain't going to tell anybody what I'm going through. Let me tell you, you're fooling yourself. You, you won't make it. You can't survive. You won't be able to last because Galatians chapter 6 and verse 2 said, share each other's burdens and in this way we fulfill and obey the law of Christ Naomi stopped seeing others and she saw only herself she saw herself abandoned and alone she saw herself forgotten and forsaken she saw herself deserted and, 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 and even distant from others. She saw herself isolated and independent. She saw herself and it became all about her. And she says, I'm full of bitterness. Here's what God is saying this morning, Brown. Simply don't miss who's left. If you're going to change your perspective, you need to start seeing everybody. And you got to not miss who's left. Because can I tell you something? Everybody ain't gone. But, 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 but preacher, mama gone. Preacher, daddy gone. Preacher, my best friend, I left here with COVID. Preacher, I lost this cousin. I lost this nephew. I, it seemed like I've had nothing but loss after loss. But can I tell you something? Everybody ain't gone. I wish I could have been there. I would have tapped sister Naomi on the shoulder and told her, girl, just open your eyes and look around. You still got children that you didn't even have to give birth to. You still got a community that's encouraging you. You still got a whole city that's excited to see you come back. You still got a church community that's ready to rally around you. Matter of fact, you still got rich family that's able to pay all of your bills. Just open your eyes and see the community that's around. So if you came here this morning, if you came feeling that I'm in this thing all by myself, nobody knows what I'm going through. If you're here in here, I need you to do something this morning. Just look around. Just look around. Who do you see? What do you see? Can I tell you what I see? I see everybody. I see everybody. I see everybody. Let me just say this. Y'all look good this morning too. I see everybody because can I tell you something? My God will supply you with what you need. That's what the uh, scripture says. My God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory. And sometimes the need that you have is a shoulder that you can cry on. Sometimes the need that you have is an ear that will listen to your situation. Sometimes the need that you have is just the hand of a friend that will reach way down and pick you up when you're falling down. Sometimes the need is just somebody that will walk this journey with you. God says, don't miss who's left. Matter of fact, matter of fact, truth be told, Brown, we ought to thank God for who's still here. Thank God for who's left. The fact that he has not left us by ourselves. Change your perspective. You ain't in it by yourself. But you got everybody around you see everybody see everybody but then here's another e y'all in terms of changing our perspective drop that i and replace it with e what e is that everything 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 expect everything expect everything i, I call this her insecurity her insecurity because ruth chapter one uh verse 21 i went away full but the lord has brought me home empty why call me Naomi when the Lord has caused me to suffer and the Almighty has sent such tragedy upon me mistake mistake number mistake number one mistake number one we said she isolated herself 
Here, here's mistake number two. Mistake number two, she didn't take proper inventory of herself. She didn't take proper inventory of herself. Do, do you hear what she said? I had everything and now I have nothing. I've gone from full to empty. I've gone from riches to rags. I'm insecure. I'm, I'm bitter now because of my situation. Matter of fact, it's the Lord himself. It's the Almighty who has made this life bitter for me and has caused me to suffer and has sent all of this tragedy upon me. Inventory, inventory, inventory. Naomi, why are you so insecure? Well, I'll tell you why she was so insecure. She was insecure because of her fight. She was insecure because of her fight. Look, Naomi felt like God is against me. And not only did she feel that way, but she told everybody else, look at the number of times that she is going to say, it is God fighting me. It is God striking me down. It is God that done stripped everything away from me. It's God that's causing me to struggle. Now, we don't like to talk that kind of language in church. But there are some folks in here this morning who feel as if God is against you. Uh, the, these are the folks, these are the folks who you done prayed and prayed. And your prayers haven't been answered. Anybody like that? I, I mean, you were going through so tough until uh, uh, not, not, not only did you come to church three Sundays in a row, and you got here early, you stayed for the benediction, but on Wednesday, you even got up for the prayer call. You were on the prayer line. You text your prayer request in to the Lord, and yet, instead of things getting better, it seemed as if things have gotten so bad until now, you're feeling as if God himself is fighting against me. She's insecure because of her fight, y'all. She's insecure because of her failures. She's insecure because of her failure. Things didn't turn out the way that she expected them to do. Uh, matter of fact, I believe the devil is really putting a guilt trip on Naomi. Naomi realized that when times got rough, instead of obeying God and staying put, we ran away from our homeland. We ran to the heathens and to that hellish nation. And now God has run away from me. And I'm catching all of this because I have failed myself. Isn't that just like the devil? when we mess up when we have done wrong the devil is always quick to remind you see I told you you were nobody I told you you were no good I told you God wasn't gonna ever forgive you for what you did 20 30 years that's why nothing keep going right in your life failure after failure insecure she's insecure y'all even because of her forgetfulness her forgetfulness Look, uh, Naomi in chapter 1 verse 6 she heard she heard that Moab that the Lord had blessed his people in Judah she heard it and she stepped out and began to return to her homeland but then so quick law she forgot the goodness of the Lord and now she's telling her daughter-in-laws and everybody else y'all go on back leave me alone isn't that just like some of us y'all we forget the goodness of the lord we forget where god has brought us from matter of fact we're so full of amnesia your brothers and sisters that sometimes we need to be reminded of how good god really is Somebody saying, preacher, you mean to tell me he's good to me? You don't know my situation, what I'm going through. You don't know how bad uh, my life is right now. But can I just remind somebody of, your, of God's goodness? I know God has been good to each one of us. And matter of fact, brothers and sisters, I, I don't even have to go back to last year. I don't have to go back over the pandemic. But let me just throw this in. The mere fact that you're still here after the pandemic, that says God is good. But let me go back just 12 hours ago. Good God Almighty. Can I tell you what God did? He laid us down. 
while the robbers and the thieves and the murderers were going and roaming up the streets brothers and sisters God laid us down and allowed us to sleep and then he gave his angels charge over us to guard and to keep us all night long while we slumber and slept some of y'all left the club kind of late early this morning but even while you were riding on the street it was nobody but God that watched over you and then early this morning God woke you up God opened your eyes God gave you strength and activities in your limb he gave you breath to breathe he gave you a mind to come out to the house of the Lord then he drove you on him to church allowed you to watch online can I tell you God is good don't ever forget the goodness of the Lord and so, and so here's what God is saying. Here's what God is saying. Not only don't miss who's left, but don't minimize what's left. Don't minimize what's left. Naomi, sister girl, you got this thing all wrong. You said you are empty. You have nothing. But let me tell you, you still have something. And what you still have is faith. You still have faith. Faith is what got you up. Faith is what brought you back home. You still have faith. Don't minimize your faith. Can I tell you something this morning, Brown? Uh, we are a people of faith. And even when it seems as if you have lost everything, can I tell you what you won't lose? You won't lose faith. Oh, preacher, I may not have lost my faith, but it's mighty low right now. I, 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 I know you're saying like, I, I still got it, and the reason why you still got it because if you're saved, you're always saved. And the same faith that got you saved is the same faith that you have right now. Well, let me tell you how to increase your faith. Let me tell you how to get more faith. Let, let me tell you how to get more faith. And the reason how you get more faith, Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So faith comes by hearing and hearing the good news about Christ. In a time that you want a little bit more faith, here's what you got to do. Just open up his word. And just begin to read his word and begin to claim for yourself the promises of God Almighty. That's why, Brown, I say when I think about E, I'm expecting everything. I'm expecting everything. Are you crazy, preacher? Inflation is high, economy is bad, but I'm expecting everything. And the reason why I'm expecting everything because the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein i'm expecting everything because the cattle on a thousand hills belongs to the lord all the gold and the silver belongs to the lord i'm expecting i'm expecting everything because if i seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness the word says all of these things shall be added unto you i'm expecting everything i'm not just expecting a little i'm not just expecting enough but my god shall supply all of my needs matter of fact to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can even ask or think I'm expecting everything because God is able. Won't He do it? Won't He provide? Won't He keep you? Expect everything. Expect everything. Expect everything. If you ain't got a job, good God Almighty, you expect everything because I've been young and now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken not his seed begging bread I'm expecting everything because the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me to lie down in green pastures he leads me beside still waters he restores my soul he leads me in the pathway of righteousness for his name's sake and yea though I walk 
through the valley of the shadow of death I ain't got to fear no evil for thou art with me thou art with me your rod your staff they comfort me surely surely Expecting everything, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard the great things God has in store. He's getting ready to blow our mind. I'm expecting. Change your perspective. See everybody. Expect everything. Let me give you the last one. I'll let you go. Drop that I. Replace it with E. Every day. Be positive. Every day. Be positive. Every day. I call this her identity. Her identity. Because uh, uh, Ruth chapter 1 verse 20. Don't call me Naomi. Instead call me Mara, for the Almighty has made life very better for me. Mistake number one, she isolated herself. Mistake number two, she didn't take proper inventory. She had something, even when she thought she was empty. Mistake number three, she spoke ill of herself. She spoke ill of herself. Talk, talk, about, talk about an everyday necessity. When it comes to your identity, don't lose your name. Don't, don't lose your name. Don't, don't lose your name. Na Naomi means sweet and pleasant. And yet she tells the folks, change my name. Don't call me sweet and pleasant, but call me bitter and pain. Can I tell you something, Brown? Don't you let your disappointments define you. Don't, 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 don't let your situation, don't you let your situation identify you. Matter of fact, don't even let others define you. See, so oftentimes, not only will we speak ill of ourselves, but we are by in and let what other folks say get in our head and mess us up. It matters not what they said about you on social media. It matters not who they unfriended you. It matters not what garbage they put out there on you. Look, don't you lose your name. I appreciate what Valerie told our sons when they were growing up. She gave this bit of advice to them. She said, look, look, it doesn't matter what folks call you. What makes the difference is what you answer to. And somebody might be talking about you. They might be scandalizing your name, but you need to know who you are. You need to know whose you are. You need to know what your name really is. And, and we got a whole lot of names in here this morning. Every last one of us are special. But let me give you one name that will describe every last one. If somebody asks you who you are, you ought to tell them, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Before I formed you in your mother's womb, God said, I already knew you already had ordained you I already had a calling on your life and I need somebody to know I'm blessed I'm blessed as I look around I realize that I'm blessed and so don't lose your name but not only don't lose your name don't negate his plan don't negate his plan. Talk about being positive every day. Look, you stop talking about what you can't do. 
stop talking about what won't ever happen to you. You stop talking about this is impossible. Don't negate his plan. Because God got some bigger plans for you. Can I tell you what Naomi was thinking in her head? And, and the reason why I know she was thinking this in her head is because this is what she told her daughter-in-law. She told her daughter-in-law, this is my plan. I got to go back home. I got to find a man, marry a man, get pregnant by a man, have children by a man, grow those children up before I can have some more sons to give you. And are you going to wait around that long? That would take 20, 30 years if you're going to do it. My plan. And so she said, go on back home. But can, if I was there, I would tell Naomi, sister girl, God got a better plan. God got a bigger plan. Because what was going to take you three decades only took God three chapters. In chapter one, they had nothing. But God gave Ruth a man in chapter two. God got her married in chapter three. And God got her a baby in chapter four. And within a couple of months, before the barley season was over with, God had already provided her with everything she would need. Matter of fact, even the great grandfather of King David himself. Can I tell you something? God got bigger plans for you. And he ain't got to wait till the economy turn around. But God can bless you even in the midst of recession. God's got bigger plans for you. God can bless you even in the midst of your enemies. Even when your haters are all around. Don't you negate God's plan. Let me give you one more when it comes to speaking ill of yourself. Don't you remain in shame. Don't remain in shame. Look, stop that pity part. That Naomi said that I've done wrong and now God is against me. But I need to tell Naomi today, you can recover. I can recover. Truth of the matter, every last one of us have sinned. We have come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. But God said, if you confess your sins, he is faithful to forgive you of your sin and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. And so here is what God is saying. I can heal your hurt. I can forgive your sins. I can pick you up and dust you off. And so stop speaking ill of yourself. But learn how to be positive every day. So here's my last point. Here's my last point. Look, action point. Don't mess up what's coming your way with a negative tongue. Don't, don't you mess up what's coming your way. Because you do understand, Brown, that life and death is in the power of the tongue. Proverbs chapter 18 and 21. The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequence. And so be positive every day. Be positive every day. But preacher, I don't know how to say the right thing. Let me give you what to say. When you wake up in the morning, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Be positive every day. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Be positive every day. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Be positive every day. For he promised never to leave me. Now let me walk alone. And when God got through blessing Naomi, he took her bitter and he made it better. Can I just show it to you? Ruth chapter 4. Ruth chapter 4. Matter of fact, God left Naomi speechless. When God got through doing things, verse 14, the women of the town said to Naomi, Praise the Lord who has now provided a redeemer for your family. May this child be famous in Israel. May he restore your youth and care for you in your old age. 
for he is the son of your daughter-in-law who loves you and has been there it is better to you than seven sons don't tell me God can't do it he'll turn it around he'll turn it around he'll turn it around it is no secret what God can do what he has done for others he can do the same thing for you and so this morning change your perspective change your perspective for if you can see it if you can speak it God can solve it if you can see it if you can speak it God can handle it if you can see it if you can speak it God can work it out how can I change my perspective stop looking at your problem and start looking at the problem solver stop looking at how big your mountain is and start looking at your mountain moving God stop talking about how many enemies are all around you and start talking about the army of God that is for you for if God be for you he is more than the whole world against you so this morning Brown drop the I replace it with E drop the I drop the I of isolation stop your pity party replace it with E of everybody and start thanking God for everybody that's still in your corner drop the I of insecurity and stop talking about what you ain't got and replace it with E of everything for God is still able to supply and meet your need drop that eye of imperfections talking about what you've done wrong because every last one of us have done so wrong but replace it with the E of enough for his grace is enough his grace is sufficient he can cover your needs he can look beyond your faults and supply all of your need. Drop the eye of inconsistencies and replace it with E of excellence. God deserves our best. Give him your all. Drop the eye of inferiority and replace it with the E of empowerment. For with the help of God, I can run through troops and leap over walls change your perspective drop the eye of insanity of trying to do it like the world and replace it with e enlightenment from the word for the word is still true trust in the lord with all of thy heart do good and thou shalt be fair delight yourself in the lord and he will give you the desires of your heart trust in the Lord and lean not to your own understanding but in all of your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your pathway change your perspective God ain't against you but God is still for you he's still in your corner he's still on the throne he's still calling shots change your perspective I know it's rough I know what the doctors have said but change your perspective God is still a healer God is still a miracle worker God is still a way out of no way God is still working breakthroughs God is still doing the impossible change your perspective and this morning look to Jesus look to Jesus the author and finisher look to Jesus don't take your eyes off of the Lord come here Peter the Lord told Peter step out on the water he stepped out on the water and in faith he started walking on the water but when he looked at the storm when he looked at the wind when he felt the waves he started sinking but good God Almighty when he put his perspective back on Jesus and said, Lord, save.
save me. Jesus, reach out and save him. I need to tell somebody, look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus in your midnight situation. Look to Jesus when your body is aching, when your burden is heavy. Look to Jesus when the journey is long and the mountain is high. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. Change your perspective. Change your perspective. I've seen the lightning flash. I've heard the thunder roll. I felt sin breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. But I heard a voice from Jesus said, "Still fight on." Yeah, yeah. Look to Jesus, our Savior, our Redeemer, our Waymaker, who on Friday on an old rugged cross paid the price died for our sin went down in the grave but early early Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hands look to Jesus won't he do it won't he do it won't he do it I need some Naomi's I need some testifiers that can look back over your life my bitter he made better my lemons he turned it into lemonade won't he do it i need some testify that don't mind letting the world go yeah 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 make it better make it better make it better that's my prayer make it better turn my situation turn it around make it better make it better and lord when you get through working on it make me better make me better if you don't move my mountain give me strength to climb if you don't remove the river let me wave through the water make me better give me joy unspeakable joy Give me strength. Make me better. Yeah. 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 He will, he will, he will, he will, he will make it better. Some folks don't understand my hollering. Some folks don't understand my loudness. I ain't just being loud for y'all, but I'm being loud for myself. Cause sometimes you got to encourage yourself to say this too will pass. This too will pass. He didn't bring me this far to leave me now.
Get me behind me, Satan. Get me behind me, Satan. You're under my feet. He will prepare a table before you. The door is open. The door is open. The door is open. The door is open. The invitation to God's house. The door is open. There are some Naomi's in the house. You came bitter, but you can leave better. Somebody came without a church home. Somebody came without a church home. Somebody online right now is without a faith community. And God did not design you to be alone and isolated. And today you can come, you can be a part of a family of believers, a community of faith. And so if that's you, if you need a church, if you need a family, if you need a community, if you're in the rise, if you're in the rises, if you're in the balcony, if you get up from wherever you are and tell yourself, I'm leaving here better. I'm leaving with a church home. I'm leaving with my name on the roll. I'm leaving with a commitment to Christ. If that's you. Don't leave, don't remain like you came. But you ought to get up right now. Somebody need Christ in their life. You don't know where you would spend eternity. You're lost. You've never given your heart, your life to Jesus. Today is a good day. Tomorrow is not promised to any of us. But the day that you hear is for us, heart, not your heart. If you admit that you're a sinner, believe in what Christ did on the cross, he will save you right today. You ought to come. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, somebody need to make some changes. Somebody need to make some changes. You've been throwing a pity party. You've been talking about how bad things are in your life. But God is saying today, if you can see it, if you can speak it, I can change it. If you can look to me, if you can depend on me, if you can let your request be made, no, I can turn your situation around. If that's you, you ought to come. You ought to come. You ought to come. Can we see another one? Can we see another one? Yeah, yeah. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down. Better, so much better since I laid my burdens down. I feel better, so much since I laid my burdens down. Somebody else, somebody else needs to say yes. Somebody else needs to say yes. Somebody else don't need to leave like you came. God's already been too good to you. The mere fact that he woke you up this morning ain't nothing but the goodness and the grace of God. Don't leave like you came. But you ought to come right now. You ought to come right now. Yeah. We are climbing 
running Jacob's ladder Since I laid my burdens down We are climbing Jacob's ladder Every round goes higher and higher Since I made my burn down Every round goes higher and higher Since I laid my burn down Well, burn down That's his name. Good morning, Brown. I'm not a person who likes, uh, always, uh, I get real nervous when I speak before a lot of people, but I got something to say. Last year this time, I didn't know I was in the world. I didn't know I was in the world. I had a stroke, a massive stroke, July 15th of last year. Pastor in, in Phoenix, Arizona. Pastor, I came to see me. Thank you, Jesus. I tell you the truth. I didn't know I was in the world for three or four months. I didn't know I existed. And now I came down front. The first time I came to this church, I found out, came back to church. I found out that a young man, 50 years old, had died of a massive stroke, and I'm 74. Thank you, Jesus. I didn't know I was in the world. I didn't know who I was or where I was. All of my children came to see me in Phoenix, Arizona. Pastor came to see me, and God blessed me to come down front today. I'm so thankful it can happen. Believe. My husband said that he knew I was going to be all right when I said God had my back. He had my back, and he has it now. And he's taking care of me, and he'll take care of you. I'm so thankful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Bless you, bless you, bless you. I'm talking about multiple times the doctors gave up, said, call him in. But look at God. Won't he make it better? Won't he make it better? Won't he make it better? his name can I get just a couple of more shouters can I get some more folks that don't mind praising God for what he has done for somebody else for the healing that he did for somebody else for the breakthrough that he did for somebody else can you just
good. He is good. His mercy endureth for all generations. I bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. Father God, we thank you. Oh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You made it better for Naomi. You made it better for Sister Willie May. God, make it better. Make it better. Make us better. These who have come. Nip their hearts with our hearts. Make it better right now. Lord, that person that is in that valley of despair, that person that is feeling isolated, abandoned, all alone, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will open their eyes, change their perspective, change even their language. Help them to become positive and to look to you. We thank you right now. We've gathered around this table. And God, as we partake of the bread and the wine, the elements that reminds us of your body and blood that was shed for us. Forgive us of all of our sins. Sanctify us. Create within us a clean heart. Renew the right spirit that we may eat and drink worthy of these elements. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Ma, ma, ma. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. I don't know about y'all, but I didn't come here this morning to leave the same way. But I speak it, I declare it, I believe it, better, 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 better. Somebody needs to post it and Somebody need to tweet it and somebody need to put the hashtag better. Bless this thing. My, my, my. And can I tell you something? When God bring you out, let me tell you what your testimony gonna be. I don't look like what I've been through. You see the glory. You don't understand the story of where God brought me from, but he's bringing me out better. I'm gonna look better, I'm gonna sound better, I'm gonna be living better, I'm gonna be
be dressing better, riding better. He's giving me and gonna make me better. We are. God bless you. We're people of faith. We've gathered around this table to be reminded and take inventory of how good God has been. He says, as often as you eat this bread, drink this cup, you do show forth my death, burial, and resurrection until I come again. Those online, I want you to grab some bread, get some juice ready those that are present if you didn't bring if you didn't get one coming in can you raise your hand one of our deacons are going to come and serve you even now amen and because we are a people of faith because we are a people of faith we want to affirm our faith in the Lord would y'all state this affirmation with me even now I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ his only son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended to the dead on the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen, amen. Has all been served, has all been served. Amen. Yeah. Bless his name. The Bible says that when they were there in that upper room, Jesus. Jesus took the bread, he breaked it, and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. Then he took the cup and he said, this is the New Testament of my blood poured out for you, this do in remembrance of me, let us drink together. Bible says that they sung a hymn and they left down from that place. My prayer simply ground is that you will leave down better. That you will leave down better. Not better, but better. Is all good. Is all good. Look, if you need us, we are here. You can reach out. Uh, to the church, 662-342-6407. Uh, if this is your first time being with us in person, amen. We, we normally don't hold this long, amen. Uh, but uh, come back and be with us. Stop by the guest connection desk. We got a gift of appreciation just for you. Then on the outside, I want you to stop by and see Terrence Green Jr., TJ's Animation. Uh, parents, young folks, he's doing some great things and uh, he's showing us some great ways. Young people, you're already on those video games. Look, learn how to let it make you money. Amen. Uh, check out Terrence. And then this Thursday, this Thursday, August 11th, our Axe Career Center is hosting a job fair at our main campus gym. Help us to get the word out, put it out there uh, from 9 to 1. Uh, no one has to be without a job. Amen. We got great vendors that will be there that can help you get a job 
And then Sister Jenny Holiday. Thank you, Jenny. She has sponsored our senior meals for this week. And so if you're looking uh, in the housing and need some housing needs, check out Jenny. And uh, our picnic is coming back. Amen. And uh, it's been a couple of years, but we're grateful to be able to come together and to fellowship. And we need some sponsors. Amen. So if you would love to sponsor our church picnic and love to set up uh, and have a booth or vendor, look, you can text sponsorship to 27636. And uh, next Sunday, next Sunday, another one of our sons in the ministry, Pastor Robert Brumsey, is being installed as pastor uh, at the Concord Baptist Church in Baseville, Mississippi. We'll be traveling there uh, on next Sunday afternoon. I'll be preaching as we install Robert. And, uh, and again, in just about an hour, uh, we'll be finalizing Brother Roy uh, Loomis. And uh, let's be there at the main campus uh, in support of this family. This is the year of power. We are able, uh, through his power, to do even more. Come on, stand with us. Amen. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Come on, let's, let's declare that. Let's read that. Amen. Amen. Now all glory to him who is able to do exceedingly. Amen. Where am I? Where am I? Amen. Amen. Now all glory to God who is able through his almighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Amen. Robertson family, where are y'all? Robertson family, amen, amen. Uh, and we'll close out, amen, uh, with uh, just special prayer uh, for the Robertson family, amen. And uh, bless y'all so very much, amen. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can even ask or think. And um, here's a situation, amen. Um, I don't even know what the special request is, but the word is God can make it better. God can make it better. And so as we um, say our final benediction, our final blessing, God, we thank you. We thank you even now. We thank you for this family. We thank you for that you have not left them by themselves. You are for them and not against them. You can call them to be the head and not the tail. And we pray in the name of Jesus for this family. We pray for every family that you will meet our needs that you will strengthen right now, that you will heal our bodies, that you will draw us closer together, and that you will make things better and make us better for your glory and all for your honor. And so may you bless and keep us. Make your face to smile upon us and be gracious unto us. May you lift up your countenance. May you grant us your peace. It's our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Y'all are leaving us. Bless y'all. Bless y'all heart. God bless you. And uh, again, God bless you, Brown. Look, we're going to give as we go. Um, and uh, my goodness, I know I can't hug all of y'all because I got to go. But can some of y'all come through the line and let me hug y'all? Come on, go in peace, go in peace, go in peace. Amen. One last time, just holler the word better. Yeah.